Greetings everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Thousand Week Reich Mod, in which we're playing as the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, led by Mr. L. Beria. Man, he's got one heck of a double chin, does he not? But, let's begin with a focus. Preparing to reform socialism. After a long consideration from Comrade General Secretary Beria, the failures of the Soviet Union can be attributed to the state socialist policies of its predecessors. It may be time to finally abandon vanguardist rule and reform socialism for a new era of recovery, in which we lose a lot of stability, political power, and revolutionary communism. Oh boys, but we are not looking too good right now. We have the Union in shambles, which is pretty bad. We have the Glorious Red Army, which is okay, not bad, damage to enemy garrisons and resistance growth in our territory. And we get a lot of defense on core territory. The party factionalism was... It always seems like whenever we play as the USSR, or the remnants of the USSR, there's always factionalism that spawns. And we also have the NKVD's Reign of Terror. Uh, recovery rate's pretty bad, but encryption decryption's pretty good, and our cabinet members left with Kruglov. We also have Molotov. Hmm, I wonder what he's ever done. As well as Konev. He's an efficient sociopath. Very cool. As well as Nikolai Bulganin. Very nice. It hurts our construction speed by quite a bit. Death of some, some dude. Egyptian martial law. The Bengal truce. But the mods we're using obviously include the Thousand Week Reich. Play the peace conferences and the state transfer tool mod. Just in case things get a little weird here. Oh, look. Indonesia's falling apart. Cool. So, I was recommended to play this uh, campaign. And, yeah, you know what? I figured we might as well. I want to see what the USSR is going to do. Just because I've heard. This might not be true. This might be true. At least at the time of this recording. Wow, we're getting literally no political power. Holy crap. But, that that the Russian section here, the, you know, all the Russian lands eventually might be getting a rework in the Thousand Week Reich eventually. Which would be very cool to see what happens. So, before that happens, I, obviously, want to try out Russia for what it is, or at least the USSR. And maybe we'll, we'll play as the Russian Republic eventually, and Boratia, Norls. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, that's where Sergei Wolchichowski is. I always see, whenever we play the Thousand Week Reich, we always see him die, but... Norwegian thaw. Germany goes kaboom. We'll see what happens, especially with the Civil War. Hopefully we can see a Burgundy here. That'd be kind of cool. We love Burgundy. And we are building things very quickly, as you can see here. And there goes Spain, the Spanish-Morocco conflict. Go figure. And some dude wins Finnish presidency. I don't really care. We gotta prepare for limited privatization or disbanding the NKVD. Let's prepare for limited privatization. Although we may not have nearly as much land as we did in the past, we should begin redistributing the state's assets back into their hands of individual enterprises. Lenin's NEP brought the Soviet Union out of darkness and civil war. A new economic reform will reinvigorate us now. And there goes Algeria and the Oran Three State, the Algerian War. And it seems like people just want to kill each other. But the U.S. T tests a hydrogen bomb, which is pretty good. Hey, look at that! No political power. And actually, we're losing political power every single day. Ah, you gotta love the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics. Additionally, we're trying to get as much research to be as well. Brit now, Britain wants to flex their muscle and say, Hey, we got a nuclear bomb as well. And we're like, we don't really care. we got other things to talk about here. Such as disbanding the NKVD. Although Comrade General Secretary Beria was head of the NKVD in the past, <clears throat> he alongside the rest of the Union must put this ugly stain of elitist oppression down. The Soviet people shall not live in fear of their own beliefs. But Beria's... Found dead! Early this morning, our General Secretary Lavrent Lavrenti Beria has been found dead in his DACA. It has been reported that he was unresponsive when one of his bodyguards attempted to wake him. The reported cause of death is blood loss, with his genitals allegedly being bitten off by a woman performing oral uh, sexerino on him late last night. Wow, looking very explicit here. Soon after, the Politburo was notified, and its members have, with a unanimous vote, established a provisional government and began the session to vote on a new leader. After across the Union, citizens have been both disgusted and ple pleased by, with the news, some, with some even celebrating. While police officers are ordered to suppress any acts of open celebration, reports suggest that the local authorities have generally turned a blind eye on this issue. Um, apparently, he is a serial state sanctioned uh, R word. Wow. Um, maybe it's a good thing he's gone. Oh, no. Now, what do we do? The future of the Union debates commences. 
The Politburo is unified in thought and purpose, a cohesive instrument guiding the Russian people into the harsh dawn of an uncertain world. There is no room for disagreement, no room for compromise. The people's vanguard, in other words, is locked into a unity as pure and glassy as the surface of the polished floors of the Palm Central Party headquarters. This is where the official line, a line that none dare question, for even if the NKVD is absent, the party apparatus continues to operate with a cold efficiency. It is an inspiring vision, if a little mechanical, it is also a false. In a locked room far from the noise and life of Perm, an illusion of a unity breaks like morning wind upon the Ural steeps. The pretense have been fallen. Bitter factionalism becomes the order of the day, with the defining cliques of the Soviet pol politics forming around the core candidates Bulganin, Konev, Molotov, Kruglov, and Zukov. Here at last, the party stands on issues so sensitive they are verboten to discuss outside the Politburo itself can be discussed without fear. Of the executioner's news, here the future of the Soviet Union and of Ru the Russian motherland stands on trial. Despite Beria's clear preference for Kruglov, little can be done to influence the course of debate itself. Statutes set down by Kalinin have ensured some degree of accountability on the part of the NKVD, making the shutting down of a red rock too tedious to bother with. The factories, or the factions, have also achieved rough purity in terms of support, perhaps the cleanest sign, or clearest sign, of legitimacy of this entire process. It might be chaotic, it might even descend into anarchy, and many people will be labeled reactionary rotors, but the Soviet Union will be defined on level ground. The Politburo prepares its notes, and by extension is gossip. The debates are coming soon, to the victor be belong the spoils. Oh boy. And we still have no focus, so that seems like there's going to be a lot of reading then. Oh, ultra visionaries. Oh, okay, there goes those guys. The future of the union debates unification. The Politburo, in the best interest of the Russian people and the proletarian struggle, have chosen for its first issue of debate a relatively safe topic: unification. Virtually the only thing that all candidates can agree on is that the Russian lands must be unified and under the authority of the Perm government. Everything else is up for debate. The main problem with unification, military meaning means notwithstanding, is that the union will have to adapt to ruling over vast lands so weary of Stalin's yoke and embittered, and embittered with a tight grasp of the regime and its swift near collapse in Germany hands. How do you rule a people you failed to defend? Is trust even possible in such circumstances? The Politburo is not used to debates with such incendiary ferocity, and certainly not debates of such tremendous length. For hours the debates rages before it arrives at a bottleneck the de definition of the word union. What is the scope of a, a federal control on a land as diverse and confusing as Russia? Should suzerainty be limited to administrative matters, or should the centralized government rule directly? If provinces are to be ruled under federal district governments, how tightly should the government use to rein them in? And how should governors have legitimate political authority? The crucible Fizzes. Candidates circle around one another like vultures, snapping and drawing blood at the first sign of weakness. There is no clear winner, no clear loser. In the end, it all falls to the Politburo to define the bottleneck for the candidates. As per the Politburo procedure, the conclusion of the debate hangs on the response. If the governor is powerless, Russia's provinces will be pauper holes. Uh, Buganin will be supported. If the governor is empowered, Russia shall rip itself to pieces. Huh. Well, let's go with Kona, why not? We'll try that out. And another one. Ah, preservation. Preservation of the Union. The subject was so controversial it nearly got vetoed by the Beria NKVD for its implication that Soviet socialism was somehow imperfect before Beria was convinced by a gathering of his, of his advisors to let the matter be discussed. Nevertheless, a subject that is dangerous is almost certainly important for the precise reason that it is dangerous, and thereby calls to question the fundamentals of the Union and the laws that follows. What can be reformed? What can be thrown out? What is worth preserving? Only the most hush of voices dare to ask this, but a clap on free speech will not only make reality go away, and the Union is worth everything, even treasonous thoughts. Again, the debate simmers and boils at irregular intervals. The institutions of the Politburo and the Central Committee are above a reproach, of course, but the role that a a parachik bureaucracy is hotly contested from the start. Many have observed that the old Stalin-era jokes about inept and corrupt officials are still alive and kicking precisely because the officials have remained inept and corrupt. Perhaps the bureaucracy should be reformed into different ministries, or even privatized, or perhaps the answer is stricter control, the creation of sister agencies to ensure the will of the state is carried out. Perhaps a mixture of the two? Per perhaps the bureaucracy should be done away with altogether and its functions decentralized? The debate hits a bottleneck once again, and the Politburo must decide the future of what is meant by the word Soviet depends on it. Let the apparatchiks be whipped into obedience and Russia will prosper. Or, I can top that, let the apparatchiks be purged and then reorganized to teach them better. Let's go with that one. That sounds like a lot of fun. Economic advancement. All the Politburo wishes for the Union's sovereignty, renewal, and strength. All the Politburo all will also know that without prosperity, the goals outlined above are essentially pipe dreams, or worse than meaningless. The issue of the economy, no matter how boring it might be, is critical to any form of Soviet renewal. The motion is passed with extreme reluctance. The experts brought in from the Ministry of the Interior. The paperwork checked for handy statistics to throw at ideological opponents. The debate is joined on a cold wintry night in the bowels of the Perm Central HQ for the livelihoods of the Russian people. 
The debate jumps and skips upon the use of statistics and information as candidates scramble to prove that the new economy policy or the four-year plans were the perfect state of economic organization, the critical instrument in leading Soviet Russia to collapse or somewhere in between, data piles up to the point of exhaustion. Who is keeping tabs on the Russian people's standards of living and where does and does a market guarantee those standards? What does it mean to push for liberalization and decentralized markets in a land where maybe 30% of the population are literate and capable of advanced labor jobs? No one can agree in a trend that is quickly becoming a weary predictability for the Politburo. The Politburo, of course, watches as the candidates begin to attack each other's stances, weaving a composite fabric, a, a common narrative of economic development will, that will shape the victorious candidate's economic policy. It is all coming together, but there must be a dominant thread in this debate. What shall it be? The plans were key to Russian growth, and they will see us through again. Zukov will be supported. Or, market transition is not just nece necessary, it is inevitable, comrade. Bulganin sounds like fun, but... <clears throat> kind of like some plans here, how about that? The legacy of socialism. Socialism is the white elephant in the Soviet room. It is no lie to say that under the dynamic times the Soviet Union has been through, significant ideological redefinition, adjustment, outright reform, and even creative destruction has radically changed Lenin's original interpretation of Marxism. Lenin's writings were shaped by trying times, but with German boots on Russian soil and the Rodina broken into warring fragments, one could certainly argue that the time has come for another radical redefinition of the socialist apparatus, another revolution in theory to precede a revolution in the physical. The motion is carried, and thick books of theory are taken, skimmed, through and quickly cast aside in favor of much easier readers compiled by ideological officers. The debate is joined and quickly broadens to seemingly endless depths and horizons. What is the class of society? Is a vanguard still necessary in its current form, and if not, how can it be made relevant to the new circumstances of a fragmented Russia? Ideological agendas fatally weaken the capability of Stalin's government to give compelling feedback. So should the party work to decouple the ideological agenda from its current aims, or should it double down while ensuring that the leader is kept accountable for his failings? Who wields control of governmental affairs, leader party, bureaucratic apparatus, or some combination of the three. 26 hours later, debate is adjourned. The exhausted delegates stumble home to tell their wives, husbands, and mistresses that one line has been successfully pushed to consensus in the Politburo through sheer will power alone. This line involves the vanguard must uncouple itself from the state, another Stalin will doom Russia. No reform is critical. The vanguard can shape the state to more pertinent ends, or the vanguard's ideological disobedience led to its defeat. Keep the party prosper. Okay, that one. As you can see, I'm, I'm pushing for a certain way, but the new ideological debate. The legacy of socialism and discussion was simply a prelude, an introductory discussion for the greater issue awaiting the Politburo. If socialist theory and application is up for the debate, well, perhaps it is time to determine the form of ideology appropriate to guide Russia into the future. Perhaps it is time to press the red button, to begin talking about the future of the unit in its most visible form, the Politburo. It is not superhuman, and its stores of courage are in short supply after the last debate's proceedings, but the motion is eventually passed after heavy, strong arming of the part of the NKVD, who have been apparently decided that now is the proper time to, to begin giving the Politburo a choice in their own direction. With guarded glances and worried comments about whether Barry is looking too closely at one's immediate corner of the room, the debate is joined. What does socialism look like? Must it be tailored to local circumstances? Guarded with force, can liberalization be entrusted to the people below the party, or must it be led from above? What stage will the class of society appear at? And until that point comes... Who must guard the revolution, transmit it like a beacon into the distant nights? As a day lengthens, some dare to venture further still, perhaps if the people are not ready. It is whispered, a need to transition to the preceding stage is the only f factor capable of catalyzing a successful revolution, after all. Is not the existence of the NKVD proof that ideological consciousness is fundamentally flawed in the people on some fundamental level? And if that is so, what need has Russia of the party or the controlled economy or even of the vanguard? This last debate is the most intense, and on several separate occasions, fistfights nearly break out over the screaming delegates accusing each other of betraying Russia. Even so, the political the Bureau manages to muddle its way to a conclusion, and with it, the end of the future of the Union debates. Socialism is best kept in a locked room until the Russian people are ready for it. Our loyalty to the hammer and sickle must be aligned with the faith in the Russian sword. If the Russian people were not ready for socialism, the party must wake them up. I want to play as Kolonev sometime, but apparently it's not going to be for this campaign. Oh, look at that, the Red Conclave. The halls of the Perm Kremlin now remain silent. Only the Politburo room itself still teems with life. The men there have heard, they have spoken, but most importantly, they have voted. Now it remains only for the votes to be counted. As the future of the Union hangs in the balance, the debate's concluded, and the winner is... Zukov. Hello, Zukov. There are 101 things to be said about once Marshal, now Premier Grigory Zukov. Many are too rude to say in public. How none, however... Involve cowardice, Zukov's outright boldness in demanding reforms, unique bluntness in saying where these reforms will hurt, and almost cultic magnetism that has, has aided his already robust policy pl platform. And the intense, unswerving focus on the unity of the Russian people certainly swayed the crowds to the point of swooning. Zukov has won the debate more accurately, he has seduced the audience into believing his victory. Zukov promises the greater and stronger Russian people anchored on the socialist ideal as much as they are rooted in the Russian way. He outlines his plans for Russia in brief, they are bold, they are intense, and have many, 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 many red arrows pointing at external and internal enemies. Troop counts, supply lines, maneuvers, military marches seems to echo with his voice until at the last part of his speech, Zukov leans across the podium, dispenses entirely with the microphone,
microphone and screams that Russia will walk all over everyone who's ever wronged them. Darn them all to heck. And when Russia's done trampling their enemies to dust, that's when they'll know they'll be great again. The crowd naturally goes wild, and several women faint from the overwhelming presence. It's almost religious in its intensity. Sukhov just doesn't just walk into the premier seat. He takes ownership of it, issuing curt orders and barking commands in an office that looks increasingly militaristic by the day. As the sounds of martial music echo across from the faraway office of the NKVD rings with the rustle of old armaments being frantically cleaned and restored to use usable status. And the occasional panic yell, with any luck they'll defend their station long enough for the dossiers to burn and maybe they'll even have enough bullets left to off themselves before Zukov gets his, his hands on them. Congratulations, Marshal Premier Sir. Cool. He's a Grand Warlord. Look at that. He's really focused on offense. Factor on how many divisions the country aims to produce 50%. Acceptance of national daddiest ideology and, da and, and light daddiest ideology. Cool. Oh, Bolganin is a paternal autocrat, huh? He's a right, is that right wing NKVD? Huh, okay, well, anything else? This is the only focus view we've got. So, the Grand Marshal's Nation, now that's a nice description. His vision. The opening of the Germania Metro, well, that thing is going to have to burn. Also, I do want to say this. Oh, Azukov, hello. Oh, hello. Um, like, okay, so we have our armies here, right? So with this, uh, with this army, we have these divisions that are 12 combat with, with the military police. Which should be different, right? You think this one with the L, the light infantry, it should be different. But it's 12 combat with, with military police, with light infantry. So it's, it's a little bit, you know, different. But honestly, just use infantry. But whatever. Little lens reverse. Some are calling it a bold literary reimagining of history. Others are scrabblings of, of madman. Neither way, Fyodor Ivanov's new novel, The Lens Reverse, is a work that cannot be ignored. The novel, published under party auspices in the Soviet Union and disseminated with much difficulty by Marxist organizations across the world, described a world where much of the Roman Empire never fell. It embarked on the liberation of the South and North over the course of five centuries before splitting into four cardinal directions, but in Europe and this world is but a backwater of the book's real focus in Asia. A rapidly modernizing Japan has colonized much of North and South America, North or North America and Southern Africa. And in the Mongolian Russian plains, a strange egalitarian creed of the Mongolian state has carved out a new vision for humanity. Ivanov's Mongolian pro protagonist, B Bill Gunn, takes part in several pivotal struggles between the state and its imperialist American and Japanese rivals, including a long bloody war among, along the Manchurian border that is a transparent parallel to the great patriotic war Ivanov himself experienced. As Bill Gunn struggles against the decadence of his own countryman, he begins to take an active role in this country's own politics, while at the same time shaping the men and women around him into a noble self-sacrificing force for the greater good. The novel ends on both a narrative and a global cliffhanger, with Bill Gunn announcing his abdication in favor of young Garnick, a follower of the strange new creed of Romanism, this timeline's equivalent of socialism, and rebuilding his world anew in the image of the militant worker as the Japanese and the Mongolians race towards nuclear weaponry. It is clear that the coming storm will be far more brutal than the last. International reaction has been mixed. One reviewer bitterly argues that if statesmanship were meant to dream about implausible worlds, perhaps Churchill would have kept his job, but on the whole, the novels received a positive response. Several Asian communist leaders have already noted that the prominent role of Central Asia proto-socialist movements in the work as an implicit endorsement of their own struggles for national liberation, and the work has even made its way into the office of Ho Chi Minh himself, albeit in a much bridged form. Unrealistic, where are the plans to dam the Alaskan Straits? Ha! <laughs> this alternate history market is really crowded nowadays. Will rogues from the Japanese army firebomb the world? Yeah, let's dam the Alaskan Straits. Why not? Might as well, right? Cool. Japan announces the right to war. You know what? That's probably a good idea. Good job, Japan. And, uh, Sadeh declares Greater Syria. Well, good luck with that. And we've got some of this, so we either want to do none of that because, well, that's a little bit ahead of time. We can't really do that. And it looks, looks like it got worse. And we're still losing political power. Ryukyun, oh, the comment. Ryukyun Independence made a revolt, so be it. And then we'll probably reclaiming the birthright. Are we a monarchy? The NKDEVD wants a country, so be it. The bottom part of the... Oh. Martial law. Um, I'm not really sure. A little Armenian? Okay, Marshal Zukov's vision. The Soviet Union's most decorated and successful military commander, Marshal Grigory Zukov, has secured his leadership of the remnants of the Soviet Union and has been made premier and perm. One of the few Soviet commanders to repeatedly succeed in battles against the German invaders in the Nazi Soviet War, to many it was clear that despite not being the favorite of the powerful NKVD, Zukov would rise to ultimate power over what was left of the Union. From now on, it would be this man's vision that will drive the Soviet Union forward and is dead set on reunifying the nation, smashing the Nazi menace, and liberating territories that have been torn away, hailed to the Grand Marshal, and reclaiming the birthright. The German invasion broke us. Our territorial integrity, our hearts, our minds, and spirits ripped asunder by the horrors of their advance. Whole nations broke away in fear and convulsion. What was left was held aloft on 
only by the bullet and the gallows. We are a traumatized union, forever haunted by what was lost, like a man seeing faint shadows in an empty house. Those days are over, though. It is time to make us whole by persuasion or by force, and we are more happy to shoot anyone who disagrees. So, who do we go for? The Little Armenian, Transvolga, Idel Ural, Taming the Desert. I want to just kind of go to war immediately. Oh, look, a salute! Now, what is all this? Bottom of the proverbial barrel. I don't know what this does. Pol Pokrishev, the cripple. Antonov, a million burdens. Oh, okay, cool. Anti Siberia. Do we get cores on anything here? Or do we already have cores on everything here? Um, okay, we already have cores on that, so that's good. Nice. Uh, research uh, military factory speed would probably be good to do. Alright, let's grab some of this too. Advanced computing machine. And since we don't have anything else coming by soon, there's a lot of things going on. Unrest in, in Bulgaria, but I don't do the rebellious Tatas, right? Edel, Ural. Yeah, let's go that one. Oh, the rebellious little Tatas. Edel Ural is nothing but a nation of rogues, villainy, and tyrants who claim to rule over the former two. It's a monstrosity created by German invention and sustained through bloodshed, and we will have no remorse in at all scrapping it off the face of the earth like the mistake it is. These Tatas will be made to bow before the Union they abandoned in the pursuit of fascism, and if they love this taste of boot Polish so much, well, we will teach them a thing or two about how to lick. Hmm. Create the Soviet Isles. NK can go live on the Northern Isles if they want to govern, be governed so much. So, I don't know if the NKVD can actually coup us at all, but... Fill in the NKVD shoes. Huh. I'm not really sure which one to do here. Just to be safe, execute. <laughs> Just execute him. Okay. So I want to go to World War with at least one person. So first, but then maybe do some of this because it seems like we probably have to do this. Konev is the last remainder of the NKVD and they need to be dealt with immediately. Well, oh. Well, that's not good. Um. Well, if that. Oh, I want I want at least do one. Can we at least do one? We'll do the NKVD want the country, so be it. Following a brief power struggle within the Politburo following Beria's death, the legendary war hero Marshal Grigory Zukov has become the General Secretary of the Soviet Union. This will undoubtedly bring a new era to the Soviet Union. I'd love to do this, but we kept to wait. American imperialists, Russian Republic, reuniting the Russian SFSR. Um, okay. Ultimatum Finland, the monstrosity by the sea. Nice. Call up all reserves. Wow. Is that going? No, that's not. It doesn't go to limited uh, to all adult serve. It's Japanese communists take over. Wow. Sign of Vietnamese War. Yep, there's a lot of things going on. Their land, their people, their blood. That'd be kind of nice. Germany forever in ashes. That's kind of cool. Extraction German wealth, the internal embassy, victory of the Volkshalle. Not bad. Not bad. Kind of cool. Bad man, that's running really fast. Revolution in Bulgaria. Good job, guys. Good job. Hey, look, Mr. Handsome. People's Republic of Japan. That's a special flag you got there. Well, they are no longer a puppet of America. Total military restriction, though. Bitter defeat. And they only have minus 2% stability, okay? Uh, supply issues. Okay, and political confusion. Yeah, I'd say they're pretty, probably pretty politically confused. Oh, he's dead. Right is victory in Sweden. Alright, well, okay. I don't think these guys can really stop us. Sadri Maksudi Arsal. Yeah, he's probably going to end up uh, dead, so... Oh, yeah, we need a land auction. Um, I kind of want to go strategic theorem. Asymmetric warfare is okay, but we're, we want to be... Oh, well, this one's not too bad either. More defense. Um, what do we want? More planning speed. Defensive theory? I want to be I want to be extremely aggressive. Training. Oh, we get more population. Do we need more population? We probably don't need more population. Division speed is not bad. Infrastructure construction speed. Eh. Tank breakthrough. Or we do this one. I'm thinking about this actually some more. But then again, special forces. We're not going to be using marines. Ground support's not bad. Uh, tanks, infantry. You already get more stuff here anyways. Air. Oh, you do get some more organization for all infantry too. So that's, that's actually pretty good. I want to do both realistically. Large scale war. Well, we're going to go with a large scale war, anyways. Oh, I'll do strategic theorem. Why not? Uh, yeah, screw it. We'll do it. Why not? Why not, right? German bombs. Our anti air forces fought bravely, but the overwhelming German air forces were too much for soldiers to handle. Parts of our nation is heavily damaged by these bombings. We will recover. Let's hope so. Alright, let's go and do this one because I'm worried about the NKVD. You never know who's watching, right? Government spies? Doesn't matter what timeline, who you're at, who you are. Should be able to win, right? 
Oh, the good one. Oh, that's over here, right? Good. Kill each other off. Oh, they actually have guys down here. Um, well, and we don't have a lot of guys either, so. Uh, we're gonna need way more guns. Holy crud. We're gonna need way more resources, too. We got plenty of planes, though. These guys are. Well, I guess technically we got in circle, too, but. Hmm. Kui Bishev. Do these guys have a unique focus tree? That is a weird flag. Uh, they actually do. Yeah, yep, they do. That one does. Krasnoyarsk? Zidanov! Oh, I know, I know that name. I've heard that name before. Ah, uh, he does not look like he's got a unique focus tree, sort of, so. It's alright. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, 400 versus 6,000? 7,000? Not bad. Oh, um, okay. Well, that was fun. Not bad. Pretty good, I'd say. Pretty good. Uh, how big is the air base? U.S. criticizes Chinese intervention. No one, I don't think really, anyone really cares. Military construction one, very nice. Uh, grab some of that because you can. All right, pretty good. And then we shall do create the Soviet Isles. Cannot be canceled manually. Create the Soviet Isles. The decision to give the NKVD their own little state was not an easy one. However, it is necessary to placate them. They can make themselves useful in the now autonomous SSR of desolate Belushia. The death of Weizmann. No, oh, well, goodbye then. Goodbye, Weizmann. Um, actually, we do, want, we do want to lower these guys as well. Stevenson? Who the heck is that? There you go. Save some guns. There you go. Well, you all might train. Might as well. Uh, Alright, they sent away peace. Let's be offensive. Anyone else have upgrades, maybe? No? How about over here? Yes. Zukov, you're leading the country, but you're also being an aggressive assaulter. We don't get any breakthrough for that? Oh, I thought you would get breakthrough. Huh, it sucks. Wait, is that... Oh, there goes that guy. Minus 50% division organization loss. That's not bad. How many times can you do this? Yeah, he's very good. So level 8 attack. Wow. Alright, so then begin sending supplies and materials. Appoint Mr. Suslov as leader. Oh, Suslov. I've heard of that guy too. The Soviet Isles SSR needs firm leadership if it's to survive. Mikhail Suslov will be appointed as leader of the Soviet to keep an eye on them. To begin deporting NKVD... Officers, begin deporting all of the members. Draw token defense treaties. Um, okay. Well, begin deporting them, I guess. It's time that we begin moving these potentially subversive officers to their new homes on the islands, whether they want to or not. Sure. Sounds good to me. Uh, I'm not really sure what else to say about that. And, actually... Turkish... Jesus Christ, guys. You know, I thought we had problems in the Russian USSR, but... Wow. Oh, we're still losing... Yep, we're still losing... Hmm. Civilian oversight's pretty good. Uh, yeah, we gotta figure this stuff out. Um, you guys. So you guys have 7.2 suppression, while these light infantry have 8. So they're actually better for that stuff. So, if we're gonna... Actually, but hold on. Just use cavalry then. 8. It's already 8 anyways. You don't need support equipment for that. All of you guys, just do this. That's so much better. We'll gain some support equipment back, but it, it's just better. So, begin deporting them all. I love deporting people. Don't quote me on that one. Uh, yeah, it's only 50 t 53. This isn't TNO. It's 52. 52. 52. And then, uh, begin deporting all the members of the NKVD. If they belong to the NKVD, then they're a potential threat. Regardless of the rank, the entirety of the department will have to make their home in the Northern Wastes. Stevenson inaugurated. What a show. Well, that is kind of wild. And welcome to the islands. You know, I could play as this nation someday. Now, Mr. Handsome over there. Cool. You don't have... How do they not have unique focus tree? What? Turkestan dissolved. The Union watches. A spy agency with a state? Wow. Red Alliance on Naval Trade and... Exile... Exiling the Nenets. Well, they got some manpower. There are no factories, no divisions. Chinese Trump. Oh, good job, China. Oh, Prime Minister. Oh, I always say Geit Scale. I think it's Gate Scale. I think. I don't know. I, I, I'm not British. I don't know, man. I'm a simple American who draws up token defense treaties after we get some more encryption or decryption. Alright, so we can't make the Soviet believe that we were completely abandoned them. 
Perhaps some uh, pretty worded documents will make them feel like uh, part of the new SSR and not discarded waste. Eh, Mr. Mustache Man is dead. He's got a weird haircut. I wonder who did his hair. Maybe he did it himself. Does it, do we know who did his hair? Can you imagine him, Heinrich Himmler like combing Adolf Hitler's hair? That's a, that's a weird thing to think about. Sorry. Oh, that's very that's just weird. But I love how fast this is. Then everyone else related will follow suit, which is good. And we guarantee them. The French Revolution. Coup d'etat on Cuba. Grand funeral. Okay, that's nice. I have so many plays Goebbels in this in the in Thousand Week Reich. Slavic Revolt. Oh god, Russia has exploded. Oh, that part of Russia. The Russia that we want to take over has gone completely kaboom. Are we getting some more army? Oh, we're getting army XP every day. Look at that. The end of the French unrest. Uh, we can't change any of this stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this stuff. I forgot that this mod loves hurting your consumer goods capabilities. Well, there goes Ukraine. Hundred fifty, huh? Well, we're still losing. Actually, we're getting point zero three political power every day. Not bad. But let's begin sending material and supplies. Unlike the NKVD, we aren't heartless monsters. We will begin sending them some basic supplies so that they can have a roof over their heads. Goodbye, Muscovine. Goodbye, Caucasus. This is. Um, I'm not even sure what's here at this point, so I'm just holding down the enter button. Serbian civil war, civil war in Western Russia. Reich's commissariat must be capitulated. I mean, who's alive at this point? Jesus Christ! Bless their souls. DNA structure is discovered. Bosnia declares independence. Can we just have Austria hungry back? Oh, and it goes. Oh, that's a t that's a tough war to win, but it's possible to win that war against Austria and Hungary killing each other. It's completely possible, but it's a pain in the butt. I might not even recommend that. Even though I think technically Hungary is supposed to lose, most normally, but it's a pain in the butt to win, man. Oh, I don't want to do it again. So if I ever play Hungary again, I'm going to lose that war. Just because you're supposed to, like, you get more things unlocked, so. And then begin building a larger Belushia. Now that the Soviet Isles SSR has sufficient manpower and supplies, it's time we begin building up something resembling civilization on that barren rock so they can begin contributing to the Union. That'd be pretty, pretty good. Under bureaucratic jurisdiction, huh? I don't want to lose any more political power, but that actually will give us more. Else, Cotton Bruno declared new fear. Who? What? Who the heck is Cotton Bruno? Huh. Well, look at that. Not too bad. Emergency vest shot the German Civil War. Nothing like oh there goes Elizabeth the second the German emp German Empire huh all right well okay two days left not bad I kind of want to see what's happening okay so uh, the shoe stuffle Ozenstadt hey look a simple SS hey it's Mr Weirdchen Reichsfeuer SS and then we have Ernst Kahl did they rework him I don't remember him ever existing. But emergency Verstadt. The old general, huh? The GGR versus SSO and versus the emergency WS. One, two, three, six. three ways of a war. Um, wow, look at that. That, look, that sucks for anyone fighting in there. Wow. Alright. Uh, yeah. Yep. Can we have Oldenstadt Burgund? I would love to see that, but obviously not in this campaign. Uh, I would like to be taming the desert, but constructing small fishing fleets. The islanders need some kind of localized economy if they're ever going to stay afloat. There are plenty of fish in the surrounding sea. Perhaps we should lease them a couple of fishing boats to keep them afloat. The Southern Uprising. Oh, very cool. Here come the Poles. The General Government. Very cool. Lviv Liberation Army. Very cool. Very cool. Unification of Greater Romania. Yep, yep. and a one. Sucks to be Hungarian in this timeline. Unless you can win. The Baltic Confederation, huh? Not bad. Not bad. And... Oh, there goes Ethiopia. Austin Civil War. Oh my goodness, God. Germans crushed. Wow. And the UK... Wait, oh wait, what's, what's the UK doing? They went to war with Norway. Typical. Very violent capitalists, of course. Uh, go and stop doing that for now, that's fine. As much as the one more army XP, it's kind of hurting us right now. As is control in Denmark. Well, good luck with that, guys. Good luck. With our tanks, these guys are okay. Medium tanks. Uh, I don't know if I can justify using those yet. 18 combat with... I would love artillery here for now, but we really just can't support very much here. So let's just save our PP, our army XP mean for now. 
And I think it's just best to rush this. So, construct several small factories. Now that the Isles are some, have some semblance of an economy, it's time that they be industrialized, regardless of where they are. Every Soviet citizen must now contribute in which to get a civilian and military factory. So, good for them, I guess. Wow, things are just going absolutely wild here. Ukrainian Civil War. Well, good luck with that, guys. Good luck. It looks like the Schutzstaffel is doing pretty darn well. Henry Kimmler doesn't want to lose a war. Then again, it's never good to lose a war, so... Fascist coup in Hungary? Okay. You're probably really pissed off there. I don't know, I would be. Sorry, of Bulgaria. How's the uh, world's factions coming along? Brazilian coup. Does Brazil have unique focus tree? Yes, they do. Oh, wow. Wow. The Anti-German Coalition. Southern Liberation Front. Constructing some small vessels. How about we go ahead and do this one? And when's the next research done? In about a week. That's not bad. Just crisis in Poland? Yeah, I bet there's a crisis in Poland. West Ukrainian National Republic. My goodness. A little more thought stack is always nice. But how about we read about transfer one division to the nation? The northern wastes are quite dangerous, and while polar bears certainly wouldn't mind making a meal out of one or two officers, we will send the Soviets a small army detachment so they can at least sleep at easily at night. Okay, maybe we can choose which division we go. Royalist coup in Romania. Interesting development. Alright, interesting. And then maybe we'll end with reading the NKVD's shoes. Yeah, I could probably go and do that. The NKVD's grip on the nation was unprecedented during Beria's leadership. However, these days are now over. It's time that we begin the process of reforming the internal security service. Or, up oh, apparatus. Oh, hold on. Yeah, apparatus. Security apparatus. So, I guess let's go ahead and we'll take... Oh, we'll transfer one division over. And then we'll probably end the episode. Ooh, Israel took out the greater Syrian state. Wow. Hmm. Anyways, so if you like the video, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will probably unleash the rest of the Red Army to take out Trans Volga and pretty much everyone else in Russia and have a great time doing so. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.